Do you know what the right harness for you is? Hit that like button and stay tuned to find out what harness is right for you. I'm Mason Luke from MasonLuke.com. Today we're going to be doing an in-depth look at a lot of different harnesses that are currently on the market for use for prosthetics. So I have behind me here a whole bunch of different brands, a whole bunch of different styles, um, a lot of them for my personal collection as well as some new ones that uh, I do sell on my website in case that's something that interests you down the line. But I highly encourage you to look at the timestamps below if you want to jump ahead to one that you're interested in or stay tuned and watch the whole thing if that's what's good for you. Um, but we're going to start off with some of the higher end ones that uh, are on the market. We're going to work our way down um, to some of the lower end as far as price points. And then I'm also going to save my best one for last. So if you want to know my number one rated one, number one rated uh, uh, harness that I tell most people about, stay tuned to the very end. Uh, and I'll also give you an inside scoop of some of the brands that I'm actually working with to try to develop more harnesses that are a little bit more accommodating. So all right, let's start with um, some of the biggest ones in the name brand, and that is from Spare Parts. So Spare Parts has a lot of different varieties. I do sell them on my website. I want to say there's something like 10 different varieties and styles. I'm going to show you a couple of them here just so you get a feel for what they are um, and why they're so expensive. So we're going to actually start here with the jock harness just because this is one uh, that most people tend to be interested in off the bat, and that is because it is one of the most versatile harnesses uh, that is currently out there when it comes to accommodations and adjustments. So as you can see, we have a waistband harness dun, 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 right there, and then we also have two leg straps, and then here we have the packing pouch. Let me drop this down just a tad bit so you guys can see this a little bit better. All right, so... Here we have the packing pouch. What's unique about this one, and only a couple other um, harnesses have this currently, is this O-ring right here is actually a stretch O-ring. So it's going to accommodate a little bit more um, different types of prosthetics. Plus the O-ring is a little bit on the thicker side in comparison to some of the really thin ones I'll show you later. I'm gonna turn it around so you guys can see the back side. Here we got flap number one and flap number two. You can see that there is um, the O-ring inside here. You can also see you got two little pockets, one on top here and one on the bottom. Let me stick my finger in there so you guys can see it. One and two. So these are going to accommodate uh, bullet vibrators. So if you're familiar with the little tiny bullets, uh, you can pop those inside both of these little holes if you want to add vibration to whatever you're using for stimulation. Um, and that's going to do that. This is super, super silky soft. Um, very, very wide straps. And what is unique about this one, again, I told you, is all of the strap adjustments. So when you're looking for the right size for you, you do not have to worry about whether this strap size is going to work or not. You can easily, do, do, do. let's see how easily I can do it. Uh, first of all, it has some stretch hook. But second of all, it also has the ability to change sizes. Oh, it's because I'm on the wrong side. There we go. All right, so here's the adjuster. So all you got to do to adjust is pull on these little uh, straps at the bottom here, adjust up, adjust down, uh, maybe you made it a little bit too loose. All you got to do is adjust and then readjust. So you can get these leg straps to literally your perfect size um, and you're going to be good to go there. And then for waist size has two different components. So first you have this Velcro back, so you can actually Velcro it into place, whatever size you want. Um, I'm actually going to just do it around my neck to be able to show it to you a little easier because uh, doing it on the floor is going to be a little difficult. So Velcro it to your waist size and then there's these little side adjustments here to once you have it on you can actually adjust it to make it even tighter and then maybe made it a little too tight. Doot, doot. Click it and you can actually adjust this part too. So once you, you um, put it on your waist you can adjust it even higher or lower uh, and there is one on each side. So the benefits here are you're going to get like almost the perfect uh, waist adjustment size. You don't have to worry about, you know, small, medium, and large on this. 
Uh, they don't, it only comes in two sizes, which is your standard and the plus size. Uh, they're listed on my website as A and B. This one does retail for like $125. It does come in three different colors, uh, the purple, the red, and the black. So just for a reference point, plus again, three different sizes. So that is the Jock Harness. And they have other versions that are very similar to this, again, also on my website. But that's what's going on there. All right, now we're going to go on to the Tomboys. These are probably, I would say, the second most popular from the Sports Sheets line. So they have the boxer brief style, and then they have the brief style. We're going to do brief style first. Work our way up in fabric. All right, so let me unclip here. Again, we are going to have a super um, soft material. Like, this is almost like silky smooth, guys. Um, we're going to have to flip these inside out so you guys can see the, the pouch. You do have a little condom pocket off to the side here if you wanted to be able to use that. Again, we got um, a mesh backing on this one. This is not a cotton, it's like a mesh. And then open here. This makes it a little easier to see those little vibe pockets too. You got the lower one, the upper one. We got some adjustment going on with the um, O-ring here. Got some stretch to it. And let me tell you what the material is while I have this part open. 77% uh, nylon, uh, 20 three percent spandex uh, they do recommend hand washing all of these you know don't put them in your dryer you don't want them to shrink um, just wash them uh, with a cool to warm water um, and then let them line dry or air dry whatever it is that you guys do at home super accommodating though um, if people like full coverage butts uh, definitely look at uh, either this style or the boxer brace style all right, let's go to the tomboys. Oh, and this is spelled B-O-I for boy, in case you're looking for that. All right, now we have the tomboy, and these are the boxer briefs. These are on the, like, the longer side. I believe this one's like a 4X, so they do um, accommodate much larger sizes too than some of the other brands. Um, a lot of other ones only go to maybe a 2X. The other uh, package goes to three, but this one does have a four. Here we got another one of those condom pockets, definitely a larger size. This one's going to have probably the most amount of stuff going on in the little pocket here. So here you can decide if you want to use the upper O-ring or the lower O-ring. Uh, so maybe you are packing, you want to pack it um, a little bit lower, maybe then you're using it for a penetrative play and you want to put it up a little bit higher. Uh, you can decide that. And I believe this one has three. One, two, three vibe pockets. This one also has a little extra, um, what do we call this, elastic band here. Um, if you wanted to be able to elastic hold something else in there too. So, and let me tell you material while I have this open, I think. I thought it was listed in here. Here we go. We have a... 93% rayon, 7% spandex. And you can find all this information um, on my website too, um, if there are certain things you're looking for, um, for facts. But these are incredibly, incredibly soft. They remind me of like your favorite t-shirt that's really, really worn in as far as material. All right, so let's put those to the side. I'll reclip those later. All right, more spare parts. These ones have gotten a little bit more popular lately. I'm not really positive why, um, maybe just because of the price point, but I don't think that they accommodate very much in terms of packing purposes. I think that they're um, a little bit on the smaller side for what they can hold. So here we have the peats. So this is uh, the peat in the boxer brief, and then I also have a peat in the jock strap. But let me show you uh, what these accommodate and why maybe not the best choice. So we're going to turn them inside out. And I believe these ones only come in a black. I don't think these ones have a lot of colors. All right, so we're going to start with materials on this one. 88% nylon and 12% spandex. And here's what I'm going to show you. So this one does not have an O-ring in it. So you could use this probably for like a packer as like a pouch inside here, but it's not really going to work for an SCP use. And here's why. I can get probably about my thumb in this little slit here, but that's about it. You're not going to be able to fit a whole shaft inside this little slit, so I'm not positive that 
Um, many people are using them for STP use, but it's available. It does have this little nylon strap here. Again, if you want to be able to maybe hold like a shaft or something in place, it can accommodate some of the smaller shafts, probably about a five inch, maybe at the max, maybe four and a half um, as far as a shaft size that it can accommodate. Anything bigger than that, probably not going to fit. It's going to be a little bit too big. All right, so that was the peat in the boxer briefs. I think that's actually technically called a trunk. And then we have the jock strap also by the, the, the peak jock strap. So similar um, in material and style, but this is going to be the type that's going to go around the waist and then up the leg, like kind of cupping the butt as if it, it was, it's almost like a brief, but without the backing. So dun, 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 see that there. So brief without the backing, not the thong style. It doesn't go up the butt. It goes around the legs. All right, let's show you the back here. Beep, beep, peekaboo, open up. And we have the same thing going on here. We got that little slit, roughly the size of like my thumb to go in it. You're not going to get a whole um, packer or anything in there. I'm going to say the slit's probably maybe an inch big, if that. Uh, but you do have that nice elastic here. This one actually feels a little bit more elastic than the other one. This one might fit about a five inch uh, packer to it. And that's the jock. Oh, sorry, not the jock, the jock strap in the peat. So we're gonna put that one over to the side. My peat. All right, put those down. All right, so that is it from the sports, sorry, spare parts line. I think I messed that up earlier, spare parts line. Um, and now we're gonna go to the sports sheets line, which is a little similar, a little less pricey. So um, when it comes to the spare parts line, you're looking at anywhere from like 120 something to I think the packing peats are somewhere around like the $40 price point, but again, doesn't really do very much when it comes to them. So let's go on to the sport sheets. So sport sheets has three different styles. They have, they call it a, a back boxer brief. It's more like a trunk, um, in my opinion, or even a brief. Then they also have their brief version. And then they also have like a panty version that is also crotchless. All right, let's show you those. Sports sheets. I'm going to do the crotchless ones first just because I think that these are probably going to be the least interesting to most trans folks, but who knows. Uh, so definitely a little bit more of a feminine style on this one. Uh, nice wide waistband. Um, it does have a little bit of, I'll have to get nice and close for this one, a like lacy print around the edging, the stitching, and then obviously that's the crotchless part there. And I'm going to open them up so you guys can see what they look like. All right. So nice closed slit here. Very, very soft material. I'm going to open that up. Nice wide O-ring um, on there. And then you also have the two little bullet. This is an elastic um, option. So it's not a pocket, but it's an elastic little loop. So you can stick bullets into the little loops, top and bottom. So similar to the other ones, a little less expensive though. Uh, these ones are closer to like a $75 price point in comparison to the over a hundred. Oh, and the other nice thing about these is they come in um, extra small to 2X. And actually that's for all of the sports sheet line, sports sheets line. Um, and they also have a life, limited lifetime warranty, which basically means if they get ruined, um, for whatever reason, like wear, tear, uh, play, they will replace them for you because they are not supposed to break. So unlike some of the other underwear companies, they're not going to replace them. Sports sheets will replace them as long as basically, uh, you can prove that you bought them, uh, as a legitimate purchase. So save your receipts. Um, and you may have to send them back to basically prove that it's their brand that broke. So these are the ones that they call their brief, their uh, boxer briefs. Again, you can kind of see not really a boxer brief, um, more of a trunk to brief. It's sort of like a little lower here on the edge. So it's not really a brief, but it's also not a boxer brief. It's more of a trunk, but not quite long enough to be a trunk. So it's like a hybrid. Uh, but these ones are called their fit line. Uh, I forgot to tell you, the other one was called the silhouette. And uh, let's open them up. 
Oh, material. I forgot to tell you material. So material is uh, 75% polyester, 27% nylon, 15% spandex, and 1% nitrile for the o-ring. These are hand wash only item. And let's open this pocket. These are going to be very similar to the last ones. Dun, dun, dun. You got that nice size o-ring there and you get the loops underneath boop, and on top. So you can put little bullet vibes in there if you wanted to. This, These o-rings are not stretchable. These are a one size o-ring. Uh, so you do need to be a little bit careful um, as far as sizing for these. I would think, but I'm going to confirm real quick. I want to say it's a 1.75 opening. One. Yeah. Okay. So let's show it to you guys so you guys can see this, hopefully. So O-ring sizing, uh, you always just have to be careful, make sure that it's going to accommodate correctly. So this I would consider like a 1.75 um, as far as opening. Not quite two inches, but pretty close. Uh, basically, you know, if you want to figure out whether your girth will fit, take your distance across the O-ring, uh, multiply it by pi, 3.14, and see if the girth is going to fit. Sometimes it takes math to figure out if your prosthetics are going to fit your harnesses. But definitely find out before you buy. All right, last one from the Sport Sheets line. And this one is the Contour, yeah. And this is the brief version. It looks very, very similar to some of the other ones um, I have here uh, and can show you. But basically, we got the brief version. It's going to be very similar. Uh, has like a lighter blue kind of color in here. It only they all come in one color only. This does connect as like a kind of pocket, but I don't know why you need to go that way because you can go through the back. Material choice is gonna or material um, composition is gonna be the same as the other two. Pocket, open, open, O-ring, and you got your two little bullet hole or bullet holders for that one. I would say that for um, these guys, you want to try to size uh, true to sizing on the the size chart. Um, these are going to be a little bit more on the fitted size. So if you're maybe between sizes, um, you might want to go with the size larger than what it says. So, you know, maybe you're between a large and an extra large, go with the extra large. These are going to be a little bit more fitted compared to some of the other ones that are going to have a little more give to them. All right, so that was sport sheets. Let's go to Rodeo, since that's kind of like the closest in relation to these guys. And going to be like the next price point. As you can see, I have tried a lot of Rodeo over the years. Um, and you can tell by how much wear is in some of these pairs. Hopefully I'll grab one that doesn't look... Yeah, these don't look as beat up as the rest. Uh, well, maybe it does. Okay. This one has the darkest, um, what do you call it, color to it. But unfortunately it does have a tear in it. All right, so these are the rodeo briefs. This was like my introductory uh, packing underwear, per se. I absolutely loved the design of these and the comfort of them. Nice, stretchable um, material. The mater this, um, it, this cotton material is really nice. And I love the functionality of the pocket. So these are a little different than the last ones we saw. I will say, over time, if you wear them like on a daily basis for a while, and maybe you're not so careful, things can happen, though. Another little hole there, um, but I wore the hell out of them. And there's actually another little hole in them down there, so who knows? I did wear them a lot, that's why it has a few. All right, so here's the pocket on this one. So, different than the wrist, uh, we got this little flap here, and if I pull this flap down, you can actually see the o ring pretty easily. What I used to tell people all the time was to wear these inside out, so wear this as, as if it's the front, put your packer through the back here put it through this way and then you have your shaft in the front and you can actually use these um, for a stand to pee underwear as well as a packing underwear. Let's see if I can do this right. Let me grab a packer. Or better yet, I'll grab an STP. Make it a little easier. Um, maybe not this exact one to, for um, use, but it'll work for demo. So you're going to thread the STP through. You're going to put it in this little pocket here. The pocket will help hold the STP down and into place or packer into place. And then when you're ready to go to pee, see if I get this less, less bunchy, um, all you're going to need to do is pull down this little part here, flip out the STP, position into place, go. 
All right, you're done. Flip this little pouch right back on top. And now you're tucked back in as if you kind of had a fly and you're good to go. So really easy to use. Um, and that's the rodeo briefs. All right, next from rodeo, what do we got? We got rodeo trunks. I have a couple different versions of the trunks. So these are the long trunks. I also have brief trunks, boxer brief trunks, more boxer brief trunks, and a jock. So a lot of them are going to be very, very similar in style. So I'm just going to pick one and show you. Uh, materials are going to be the same too. All right, so uniqueness of them is they kind of took my idea from the other ones and put the pouch on the front. So you got this little, almost like an H fly here on the front where you can kind of down, pull down and uh, get to the O-ring here. But technically the O-ring is just an opening that's sewn in. Uh, you don't actually have a physical ring inside there that can damage the prosthetic. So it's um, a little more accommodating. So if I pull this here, right, you have pretty decent size uh, ring in there. Now, if I turn it inside out, you're going to see almost the exact same thing. So turning it inside out, literally pull down and you're going to see that same pocket. So it's like the same thing as another one, but um, it's just the same design on the front and the back. So what I liked about these is they're super comfortable. They are made out of like a bamboo. So they're like super duper duper soft. I found that the material stretched for me too much though. So let's say I was wearing this packer here. Do, do, do. We're going to thread you through. We're going to put you down in. All right. So we got the packer down in there. It's packed away. But what I found was it was not holding the packer down very well. So if you had one of those SDPs that kind of pointed out a little bit further, the whole thing just kind of pointed out inside the fabric. So if you're going to use something like this, it would really work well for packing um, a non-STP item to keep things in place really well. Or if you're going to use an STP, use one that doesn't have the shaft pointing straight out, have it one that's a little bit more flexible and can point down. So that's my tip for that one. And then if you really wanted to, you could also kind of tuck the balls in that back pocket there if you really wanted to, so that it doesn't touch your skin. Some people don't like when their packers touch their own skin, so that is nice that it can pack on the inside or the outside. For these ones, I did have to also size down. I think I originally bought like a 2X version, and then I ended up having to go to a large because it was that big of a difference um, in what I was trying to get in size wise, like it was just way too big. Yeah, so even this one, uh, this is ironic. So this one is actually a 2X, 3X for the jock strap. And then this one ended up being way too tight in the legs. Like these leg holes are like small. Um, but I did give the feedback to the company and I believe that they have revised it since then, but I'm not positive. So that is the rodeo trunks. So let me show that up here real quick. So the trunks, T-R-U-H-K. All right, let's move to trunks. And then we have this one. I'm not positive what the name of this one was, but this is another one of their longer packing um, boxers. And then this one has a fly to the side here. And this one has like a drop-in uh, packing pouch. I think it's just they call their packing pouch boxers. Here you can see 95% cotton, 5% elastic. And this is what the pouch looks like. So you get the little pouch here to put stuff in. Um, and then you also get this little part here, which is nice for some of those ones that have like some bigger balls to them. So the way that that would work is thread straight through, cup it in there, put it down in this little pocket inside out. All right. And now you're pretty good at least. Again, some of the materials with some of the um, prosthetics just depends on whether or not the material is too firm for the fabric and whether it's going to uh, hold down whatever it is or not. But 
here you can kind of see how that one kind of fits through the back there in that hole and then goes to the second hole here. So a little packing pouch, but open on both sides so that way you could use for an STP if you wanted to. All right, that's the rodeos. Where to next? Um, let's go to some custom items. I think, yeah, let's go custom. So I have tried, let's do this. Packing custom underwear. So there are sometimes you get a prosthetic and you are like, this doesn't fit any of my harnesses at all. Let me try something custom. Um, in that case, I recommend hitting up Transwear. Um, they specifically make a line of products called Bullet Briefs. Um, that's their brand. And what they do is they buy underwear, like wholesale or discounted, of various, various types. Like I have here a whole bunch of jockey underwear because uh, I preferred the jockey brand at one time. Um, and then I had them custom make me some underwear to go with that. So here you can kind of see this is the H fly underwear. Oops, I'm gonna hold it up a little higher. H fly. So this is the kind where you can kind of like pull down and pull out the packers. And I had them put a design in the back to be able to secure it. So this is like a drop-in version. So this one is like a like a little ball cage here. So you can hold the balls of your STP, and then you can drop it through this little harness holder. And then that's going to allow you, there we go, to access it from this side. And I recommend if you, there's, you know, a special har specialty harness that you need, uh, you can easily hit them up and they'll show you some different ones. Let me drop this down just a little bit again so you guys can see. So to get this pull down, pop out, and then push down and back in. So that's going to be a nice way to kind of go STP, but it's also holding your packer really nicely into place using the little ball cage and then also this little shaft holder. So you guys can see that a little better. And then you can tell them what size of each of these you need and how far down you want it on your underwear. All right, so that's that one. I think that this one, nope, this one's different, okay. Uh, you can pick whatever outside design you want for your flies and stuff. This one's like a Y shape. <coughs> You can use a traditional fly if you really want to. This is one of their packing pouch options. So this one literally has a pouch that opens up this way. And then it just has a sewn in O-ring that you can drop your packer right into. Hold the shaft through here. Hold the balls in the backside here. Okay. And I think this one's the same as the other one. Nope. All right, we're close. This one is a similar version to the other one, but it doesn't have the ball cage. This one might even be one that I cut the ball cage off of it, uh, but this one just has an O-ring and nothing else. Uh, I don't recommend something like this generally, because if you put too much pressure on just the shaft and the balls, depending on the weight of your product, uh, it's gonna end up doing this, and over time, it can actually cause ripping right here on your packer. So generally not something I recommend using something like this, where it's just an O-ring by itself. Always try to support your packers. All right. Next, another custom one I had done. And this one was by the D-Slang. If you guys know who the D-Slang is, uh, they are custom-made products uh, that were generally sold on eBay. Um, they're online occasionally. It's a hashtag guy, uh, guys, like, guys like us. Guys... Yeah, guys like us. I'll, do I'll double check and put it in the description. <laughs> Hashtag guys like us. Yeah, I think that's right. It's been a while. Uh, but here's another version similar to some of the other ones. We have the little ball cage going on here. We have a nice wide O-ring on this one. Um, so if you needed something with a wide O-ring, he does custom stuff. Kind of drops in there. And the difference with this one is... It had a band that went all the way around, kind of like a thong. Um, so it went kind of up the butt crack, but it helped hold the back end of your STPs in place. This is going to be hard to demo and show. But let's see if I can get that. So here you can kind of see this part went all the way to the back of the underwear. Let me see if I can go without that first. Let's hold it upside down. 
So if I hold it this way, you might be able to see it. So here we have front shaft and then this band that goes all the way to the back side. And the idea was that this is going to help fully support the underwear or help fully support the packer and so that you don't have that ball droop thing. It kind of holds it up. Most people didn't like that it went up the butt crack though. So custom, but not for everybody. Helix gear. These ones, um, the, the brief version is now discontinued, but I'll still show it to you anyways real quick. So this was their original design. Uh, now they've moved to a boxer brief style. And that looks like this. And they are very limited at this point. But the idea of these is actually it's just this traditional underwear, not even a harness. But you could wear these with other harnesses. Uh, and it made the standing to pee really easy because of the centered fly. So all you had to do to go pee was go like this. And then it closed shut easy. It uses sort of like a helix design. So the helix is like an X. And it goes whoop, whoop, whoop. Um, using elastic. So let me try doing that on white so that you can see the background here. Ready? Boop. So it is a patented um, design, I believe, or at least patented fly uh, technology. So don't try to knock it off if you know if you like the idea. Uh, <laughs> you may get some patent infringement, but I know who owns it. So if you need a deal, let me know. All right. So that's Helix gear. And then <clears throat> let's go into underwear, regular underwear first. Uh, obviously, you can use your regular briefs or underwear, whatever you have at first, uh, if you want to. So take and wear something like this if you need to. Traditional briefs. I like the ones that don't have the flies on them. They tend to be a little bit more form-fitting and hold up some of the really tiny packers or tiny uh, STPs, things that you want to be close to the body. Um, I find that if you have leg holes... Um, on boxer briefs, things tend to fall out the leg holes, whereas the briefs kind of hold things more in place. And if it doesn't have the fly, you have a little bit more restriction. Uh, it also helps to size down one. So, you know, if you're traditionally like me, a 2X, and you go down to a, an extra large, that'll usually be a little bit fitting um, and hold the packers closer to your body. So traditional underwear work great. And then one step up from that is create your own. Uh, this is a design that I came up with a while ago. And I call this the T design. So there we go. Let me stand to the side here so I can see it. So this one is designed to be able to put, the, all I did was put a T cut in it. So right along the seams, we have a line down and then we got one across. So this fits a shaft in it. This part fits um, a balls. If you have like kind of those STPs with the more like droopy balls, uh, this works kind of as a harness to be able to hold it in place using the fabric to hold it and that was just one of the designs that worked well for me um, with one of the STPs I was using. So create your own. Sometimes you got to figure out what cut works best for you, but it can work. These were a fun one. These ones um, were a fetish version. Worked really great for a kink event. Uh, so this is a boxer brief. I don't remember what the material is of this one. Polyester. And then it has a like a vegan leather on it. But what's cool about these was has the O-ring already in it. It's actually designed to be like a cock ring uh, for cisgender men. And then it has this cool little pop-off pouch that you could use kind of to hold your packer. Um, let's see if I do that. To hold a packer or SDP in place. And then you can actually just unsnap it uh, when you're ready to play. So, and that one is by Fetish Fantasy Lingerie. If you're interested, just let me know. Um, I think I could still get these ones, but I don't currently have them in stock. All right, let's do sock straps. And other straps. All right, ready? I've done a lot of those. All right, let's see. So we have tons of different jock straps, regular straps, uh, custom straps, you name it, I've probably tried it. So let's do just one random one that I have here. This one is another one of the D slings that um, he makes. Again, sells on eBay. Let's see if I can get this going in the right direction quick. There we go. This is the original design. So we got 
uh, waistband, and then we have the leg bands. We have a double O-ring for extra support, and then if you want to be able to pack up, you got an elastic here, and you got an elastic at the bottom if you want to pack down, tuck in the shaft. And I think there's a couple of those here. I can show you this version. This is not um, a harness. This is just a jock strap. There we go. Jock straps are great for holding a lot of packers. Um, as long as you get the right style of holder, um, or maybe you're using one with an adhesive, that works great too. These are great for just holding packers into places, just a slight extra support without a whole lot of coverage. You know, maybe you want to wear something when you're about to go play. This could be a really sexy way to do it, um, sort of like male lingerie. Um, cute and simple. Dun, dun, dun. Another brand uh, that specializes in harnesses and in jock straps is Cake Bandit. Um, they have their own website. You can get all different kinds of colors for their jock straps. But what's cool about them is they're designed to hold packers. And they actually have back here a little packer pouch that you can put your packers right down into. And it's very accommodating. Like, I can fit a whole fist in there. So, and they also have a very nice wide band. Uh, so you don't have to worry about circulation and stuff. But they're a cool, cool option as well. All right, we got traditional jock straps, more D-slings, D-slings, D-slings. Let's do this one quick. This one is the shot, slingshot harness. So, yeah, slingshot STP harness. Mm, not my favorite. So this one is designed to be solely worn by the legs. There is no waist support. It just goes right up the legs and hangs out right between your two legs. Um, if you're a bigger person, that just means something rubbing between your already rubbing legs. So it generally just means additional friction that is not needed. Um, I prefer to pack things to the front of my body, which means it has to come up into the front a little bit. Um, so for me, this one was not a winner, but there are a lot of people that do like this. I think it tends to be a lot of smaller folks that don't get the chub rub going on uh, between the legs. One other thing I will point out is the slits in this are relatively small. Um, so let's see if I can hold that for you. So non-stretched, this top one looks like it's about an inch. This bottom one looks a little under an inch maybe. And then when I stretch it, I'm probably getting about an inch and a half to maybe an inch and a quarter at the bottom, which means this is probably about the girthiest um, item you can probably put into this without ruining a packer because it might get too restricted um, and cause too much force on the uh, packer or STP and it might cause ripping. So too much, not so good, but here's an idea of like if you were wearing it underneath your two legs, that's what's going to be chilling out between your two legs. Like it's not up in the front, it's under you and between you. So that one's the slingshot harness. All right, what else we got? I remember my best or last. So we're going to save that one. Let's do you two. All right, so we have a traditional harness here. This one is not designed as like an underwear style. This one is designed more for uh, like sexual play, even dildos. Whoops. There's a couple different varieties of these. Um, you can see here I have the Love Rider. They go up to like a 70 inch waist. A lot of these are going to be similar. This one's a slightly different one than that, but same same design. So, highly adjustable strap-on. Not designed for packers and STPs, more so for something that's going to be um, a little bit on the harder side. And the reason for that is it is a single O-ring. There is no additional support here. So if you have your packer hanging out in there, all of the weight on the balls and all the weight on the shaft is going to be on one point of the packer. And this will generally cause ripping or tearing or splitting literally in half uh, right where that zone is. So always make sure you're supporting your packer because if not, you will get tearing right where those two meet. It's just a sensitive point of any type of packer and too much pressure like this is going to do that. But what's cool about this, so if you are using maybe a more traditional dildo um, or have additional support or maybe you're wearing this underneath another type of underwear harness or something or another just pair of underwear, and you can support yourself, support your balls, 
uh, this might work. So here you have the waistband, again, fully adjustable. Like I said, the one goes up to 70 inches um, and you can adjust it here so you can make it smaller or bigger. And then the leg straps also have their own independently adjustable uh, points. Um, the other thing I love about this is these little snaps here, super easy to take on and off. And the reason that that's helpful is different size products require different size O-rings. So if you have something more slender, you can use a smaller O-ring. Um, and then it goes up to the larger size O-rings as well. So this one I think is like a two inch, uh, one inch, maybe one and a half. So lots of options there. Oh, there's actually another one here too. I don't know where that one came from. And uh, the other thing is that some of them have these like different backings to them. So you can actually slip this in. It has little uh, slits in it. And you can put this in behind any type of um, play device. And then it's going to provide some additional support, uh, maybe some protection, um, some barrier between you and whatever that product is. You know, maybe it has a suction cup or something and you don't want the suction cup to rub on your own body because that's, you know, painful. <laughs> suction cups rubbing on your junk. Mm. Uh, so this is actually a way that you can kind of protect yourself by putting this in behind. I'll show you a little bit up closer since this one already has it on there. So that one has it kind of snapped into place already. This one also has a little bit of a wider back. So for folks that need the additional support, it's a little bit of a bigger design on this one compared to the one I showed. All right, we'll put the basics aside and then we're gonna move on to the Elite. All right, so I will say um, the Elite one is one I like, I don't love, but I am working with the manufacturer and a couple other manufacturers to have improved on the design. So here's the Elite. It's kind of like it has the best of some um, harnesses, but the worst of another. All right, ready? Let's pop it out. So you remember on the jock strap, that original, um, this one here, how it had the waistband adjusters? Well, on this one, we get those waistband adjusters, we get the Velcro, um, so you can adjust this to up to, I want to say 44 inches. Yeah, up to a 44 inches, which is decent. It could go a little bit bigger. Has that nice satiny finish. Um, very similar to this one, right? Side by side, they, they look pretty darn close. You are still getting on this one, the stretchable O-ring, which doesn't most um, most products don't have the stretchable O-ring, but what it has that most people dislike is the backing slash thong. So this is going to go under the body and up the butt and around the backside. Uh, this makes it a little bit more comfortable, so it's not literally going up your butt. <clears throat> and it also has an adjuster here, so that way if you need to make it tighter, you can actually adjust the bottom and make it tighter if you know you don't want it so tight, you want it more loose, you could do that too. Uh, so cool design most of the way around, but I wish that it was in a jock strap style instead of a thong style. And I think then it would be a really great um, change up and a really great product. So I would say right now, this is probably the most accommodating um, as far as all of the harnesses when it comes to having a stretchable O-ring aside from the jock strap harness, or sorry, but except for the jock harness, um, which is also a jock strap. But this is probably the second best when it comes to having a stretchable O-ring, having an adjustable waist, um, and having a slightly better price point. This one comes in around like $50 versus $125. So it's a little bit of a sacrifice if you're willing to make uh, for the thong style until another one comes out, which hopefully is in the future. All right, let me put that one to the side. And now we're getting to my favorites. All right, and my number one sellers. Can you tell what they are yet? All right, it is the Packer Gear line, which I have both here and I have set up on the wall here to show you. They do come in four different styles. That glare is really, really bad for it, though. So let's bring these down a little closer so you guys can see them. We have a brief. We have a boxer brief. We have a packing pouch boxer brief. 
And then we also have a jock strap. Now I will say there is another company out there who has tried to knock off their boxer briefs. And I will show you them side by side so you know which one not to get. Because in my opinion, they're not as good either. All right, so here is the original. Oh, I dropped the other one on the floor. And here's the, the knockoff. So the original, let me show you the original first so you guys can see what, what the difference is. So the original is a full brief. You can see how it comes all the way down to uh, the bottom. It is, it's a little bit like a boxer or um, a trunk just because it's not very, very long in length. But you can see it's very, very square, right? Those, those legs come down long. And you got a little bit of room here and it comes down here. And in the butt, you get a little bit more room here. If I show you the back design of this one, however, so side by side, this is much more of like a hipster style um, compared to a boxer style. This kind of like comes up a little bit and shows a little bit of the lower cheeks instead of this one that's a full coverage. So you might want to stay away from um, the ones that look just like them, but maybe aren't them. So, and that one is by Blush or Strap U, either one of those. Um, you might, or Temptasia. Temptasia is like the brand name behind them that you want to avoid. All right, so back to these guys. So these are really, really popular. Um, same as what's on the wall. This is just my personal pair. Um, let's show you these guys though. They're mostly cotton. Super um, large, soft waistband. And these are the boxer briefs. They go from a extra small to a 3X in size, so very accommodating. We got a little bullet pouch or a little bullet vibe holder here. Open, open. We got a nice O-ring here. It is not an adjustable O-ring, so you do have to be careful of what size packers you're going to use in this. I don't recommend more than a 5.5 inch girth. Um, it will not hold very well. Uh, it will not fit through. And then somewhere, here it is. I was like, there is another. So the one bullet goes this way, and the other bullet pouch goes this way. So there are two of them in there as well. So that's the Packer Gear Boxer Briefs. And these are available on my website in all the sizes. They only come in one color, and the reason they only come in one color is because they're made to be affordable. All right, let me show you that difference between that one and the packing pouches. All right, packing pouch. Ready? Packing pouch. Um, looks like traditional boxer briefs, right? Like there is nothing describable about these. Nothing. I mean, it has like a fake fly on it, but that's about it. So let's turn them inside out and see what's inside. I should tell you material too. 95% cotton, 5% spandex. So unlike a lot of the other ones, um, this is majority cotton. The only thing that's going to be really not cotton is your waistband. So if you have allergies or sensitivities to wearing different types of material, mostly cotton right here. All right, here is the pouch that you can use. So since I still have this STP handy, we're going to pop you in there. It is more of a longer pouch than it is a wider pouch. It does have stretch to it again because it's cotton. So just know that it looks a little small, but it can accommodate more. If I want to shove the balls in there, I could. It will pack. And then the way that it is secured is it's actually like a loose secure. Um, let's see if I can show you that. So if I go this way. So it is attached to the top. And it is attached at a point on the bottom, but not fully attached. So you can see it has like a whole little pouch there. In my opinion, it's sort of like the free swinging. So if you want sort of like, you know, free swinging balls, they could be swinging in your pouch if you wanted it that way. All right. Those go back on the hanger. And let's do briefs. Briefs are going to be almost identical to boxer briefs. Definitely accommodating in larger sizes. This one has a nicer, um, bigger size O-ring as well. Again, you're going to get roughly a 5.5 inch girth on some of these because they're about an inch and a half. No, yeah, inch and a half O-ring. This one, <clears throat> five pocket down here. Oh, the boxer boost does not have five pockets. 
another wide pocket ear, and then open for the O-ring. And if you wanted to, you could easily use any of these Packard gear ones inside out. That's what I actually recommend. Put your STP through this way. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. We're getting to the end, though. <clears throat> and then now you have your fly in the front for STP. Pop to the side. Pop to the side. Go pee. And then you can tuck it right back in. Super easy to do. Ta-da! So, it's like packing underwear all in one. It can be used for STPs as long as the STP is not overly big. Alright, last but not least. This one is my absolute favorite. It is my number one recommended. It works with most prosthetics. And I say most because it has the most accommodating O-ring compared to all the other ones. This is a 1.7 five inch opening so you can get closer to about a six inch diameter which is a lot of the larger stps have a bigger diameter so you can use it for that you can use it under any type of underwear the material on this is super super silky soft so you do not have to worry about it like digging into you as long as you're getting the right size it has a lot of stretchability no matter what size you get so even if your size is off a little bit you're probably good just like on the other packers, I recommend wearing it inside out. You have the in, you put the O-ring on the inside, put your packer STP on the inside. Now you can use it for STP by already having access to the cup, the bowl, whatever. Um, here, you're going to pack with it like this. It's going to be super discreet because you got the fly on the front now. One, two to the side, STP use. It's in a good position. And then all of a sudden, tuck it back in. Um, and those little curtain fly is going to help with um, making a little bit more discreet, holding some shafts down, depending on, you know, how pointed out they might be. It'll help hold them down, too. So, again, you can wear this right under other underwear if you wanted to, or you can wear it as a standalone. I prefer wearing it on underneath under underwear, but it's up to you what your preference is. But this is my number one seller of everything I sell. And that is the Packer Gear Chalk Strap. So thank you guys for taking um, a moment to tune in to all of these different um, harnesses. If you have questions about any of them, please put them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them as I can. As you can see, there are so many different ones um, on the market. And there are even more that I didn't even discuss. But those are a lot of the bigger name brands, um, most of which I do sell on my website. So if you're interested in buying any, head there. You can see more information about most of them. Um, and hit me up with your questions. Be sure to post in the comments below which one most interested you or what one you'd like to find more information about. Thanks everyone and have a great day.